Hey guys and welcome to another Amadeo Compositions tutorial. This is the seventh tutorial in the first steps in preparation series and there have been a few changes actually. Um, first of all I'm now recording in 1080p because on a 1080p screen you have issues with um, the footage I recorded previously. And second of all I've got a new background. Actually it's the same car just um, it's a render from from the rear. And yeah as you might remember we finished covering the 3D view port. So now we're going to take a look at those um, properties panel, okay? Um, well, we did not actually quite cover the complete 3D view port, okay? Just an um, object and edit mode, but sculpt mode, vertex paint, texture paint, and weight paint mode. We're going to worry about them um, somewhere in, sometimes in the future because right now we don't need them. However, I can promise you this much, we will need it um, in our first tutorial series because I've got that one pretty much figured out so stay tuned stay tuned for that anyway um, as you can see here we have the properties panel oh actually not the properties panel because this is the properties panel but just um, the properties menu so to say okay and inside this properties menu you've got a couple of tabs okay for now let, let me just give you a quick overview of all those tabs and what they are here for and then we're going to cover them one by one quite in depth. Okay, so now um, this first tab is, those are the render settings. And then here you can just, um, uh, you can make a few changes on how your scene is rendered, okay? First of all, you can render it. Then you can make a few adjustments in the render layers. Um, more about that later because we need to um, look, take a look into that together with the compositor. Um, then the dimensions, you know, the resolution, frame range, aspect ratio, fr uh, frame rate, etc, etc. Then anti-aliasing. For those who don't know what that is, we will cover that as well. Then motion blur. Okay, so if an object is relative to the camera, moving very fast, it kind of blurs. Then shading. A few shading options. Um, performance, how your scene is rendered the number of tiles and number of threads for your processing unit. Um, then post-processing, are you using the compositor or sequencer or not? Then, um, also quite cool, the um, baking options. And here you can actually make adjustments on how to bake something. So for, you can, for example, um, create a high-poly cube now and put it on the same spot as this low-poly cube. And then you can bake the high resolution with lots of vertices onto the low resolution and therefore saving geometry. Now it's not perfect but it's pretty cool. And finally, uh, don't worry about this one, this is actually an add-on so you don't have this most likely activated. Okay, then the um, scene. In the scene tab you can make a few adjustments and concerning your scene. So first of all you can uh, choose the camera that is used for rendering your scene. Then you can make a few audio adjustments. Then you can um, change between the units. So, do you want a metric measure measuring system or imperial? You know, also feet and inches versus meters, centimeters, and millimeters. Now, I think I don't have to mention which one is more logical, but more in that uh, later. <coughs> um, then keying sets are used for animation. A bit advanced, so we're not going to look into that just now. And then gravity, you know, uh, how strong is your gravity and where it's coming from. And last but not least, simplify, one of the most amazing features in this tab. Um, yeah, you're going to love this one, I'm sure. Okay, now, third tab is the world tab, okay? Here you can make also a few pretty cool adjustments. You can set up your, your sky, okay? Um, dependent on a angular map, for example, which is really like similar to HDR images, but not quite that cool, but it's, it's still pretty cool. And then, very impressive are those few options here. Ambient occlusion, environment lighting, and indirect lighting, okay? So those are basically um, extra ways to of lighting your scene, as opposed to lamps, because lamps are fairly boring, but also fairly powerful. But those options here just give you that extra spice to, you know, enhance your scene. Then you've got the gathering method, okay, so for example, uh, you, you have ray trace and approximate, and for example, for indirect lighting you need approximate, 
you can see it automatically tells you only works with approximate gather method and yeah and then on the other hand you need ray trace if you want to use um, I'm gonna show you those things for things later then you can actually set up a mist so object in the distance are kind of um, you know covered by mist and uh, yeah anyway and you can set up a few stars if you want to make like I don't know a rendering of a planet or of, of the Sun or whatever and then we come to the object tab okay and here you've got um, your transform um, informations same thing as you have over here um, then you have Delta transform so this is kind of like an additional transforming option so you can adjust that without actually messing with uh, the basic transforming options and then you have like transform lock so you can for example lock the location X so now you can not move it um, you can see what I mean you cannot move it along the x-axis if you try it it just um, moves further away from the camera or cl closer to the camera anyway same goes for rotation and scale so now you cannot scale it in the x-axis now with relations those actually show um, where your object is on the layers on which layer and you can also move them and uh, who, uh, which objects the parent if it has one at all in pass index more of those things later and then groups you can actually just add that to a group so for example let's duplicate this let's select both hit ctrl G and you can see they are in a group and now here you can see this group and as you can see you can add or you can create additional groups and yeah you can have several groups for the same object um, just delete this one as well then we have display what is displayed what isn't um, for example you can display the name now you can see this is cube 001 and so on and then duplication um, also pretty cool I can show you what duplifaces are um, this is pretty cool anyway then we have relations extra with a few um, advanced options then motion path um, I think we talked about them in one in a previous tutorial when I showed you um, what those two buttons do okay okay then we come to the constraints constraints tab and you can see at first that it looks pretty blank but if you click on add constraints you can see there are numbers there's quite a number of constraints and they have a quite different um, functions for example you can uh, make your object track something or according to something you can create relationships to other object or you can uh, copy location from another object or copy rotation or limit location or rotation or limit scale or whatever um, then we have the modifiers uh, tab also very exciting you have lots and lots of modifiers and they can do they can do very cool stuff one of them you already know subdivision surface just makes everything smoother and more detailed um, you can see the categories modify generate deform and simulate and then we have the object data tab this is also pretty cool and um, here you can actually decide um, or let's go at this from a from in a different way um, you can see this is the object the object is cube 001 okay and you can see over here this is the scale of your object now this is your object the origin is your object basically but the mesh is not an object this the mesh is a, is a mesh okay and in the object data you can actually assign a, a mesh or a different mesh to this particular cube um, yeah more on that later but it's pretty cool and then the normals so if, uh, I'm not even sure what this does let me just see okay no idea I will find out uh, as soon as we use it then texture space you can mani manipulate the texture space of an object um, and then you can this is also pretty cool you can add different groups you can uh, not groups different things that you need vertex groups shape keys UV maps and vertex colors okay so vertex groups is what you need for example to um, assign vertices to a certain part for example you can assign vertices to a um, particle 
uh, to particle system and so on. Shape keys is what I used with my female character that I showed you um, to animate her facial expressions. UV maps is what we use to position, for example, textures and so on. We'll, we'll look more into this later. Okay, then um, we already come to the materials tab. This is also pretty exciting. Here you can add and delete materials. And now, actually, let me just show you real quick. You can actually add it. Uh, let me just delete this. You can make a new uh, material. You have lots of options. Might look a bit scary at first, but it's really not that big of a deal because you don't need to um, change all of them. And to each a material, you can actually um, add several textures. They are displayed over here. So for example, if you hit add new, you can see here we have a cloud texture and also lots of settings. And then we already come to the per particles tab. And in here, you can actually add a particle system. And let's just hit play down here so you can see what it actually does. You can see particles fall from this cube. And now you can also increase the numbers to, let's say, 100,000. You can see way more um, particles actually come out of your cube. And you can also set up hairs in here. So you can see now it, your cube has hairs, but this is those are a bit too many hairs. So let's just cut that down to, let's say, 100. So you can actually see what happens here. And now your cube has very straight and boring hairs. And finally, we have the physics tab. Let's just delete this. And let's go back. And in this tab, you can actually set up um, different things concerning physics. For example, you can set up a force field to, um, you know, make your particles blow in the wind or soft body animation if you have like a fluffy animal or some kind of... Um, uh, who knows? Fluid simulation, smoke simulation for explosions, fluid simulation for, like, I don't know, pouring water into a glass or something, um, collision detection, cloth simulator, and dynamic paint. Now, this one is new, so I'm already excited to make a tutorial about dynamic paint, but it'll take a few more days or weeks or maybe even longer to for me to get there because you can see there's quite a lot to cover. And... Um, I also need to work on this other tutorial I mentioned because you guys have to be bored to death by now. Um, we only did the very dry part of Blender, so yeah, stay tuned for the next tutorial. And now, um, in the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at those first few options. I think we'll get to uh, probably not as far as I'd like to, as usually. Um, but yeah, I hope you learned something. I hope I was able to give you a quick overview. Um, on those tabs. Um, by the way, this up here is called Outliner and we will talk about this as soon as we're finished with um, this thing. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, if you have any questions or ideas or, or if you're unhappy about something or whatever, please post it in the comments. Um, also, please visit my website Um if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you probably notice that it's pretty hard to find all the different tutorials and you don't have like an overview on something. Um, on my website, I've, I have everything well structured and it's way easier to find things. So yeah, please check it out. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.